Hi there. It's Saturday, April 27th, and time for Proverbs 27. And I'll be honest with you, I made this video already. Okay. Spent 30 minutes making it, highlighting everything, talking about everything, only to find out while checking the playoff that my microphone wasn't working, thanks to an update Windows did last night and rebooted and changed it. So here we are doing it over again. That's why everything's already pre-highlighted. So, And we're going to start all over from the beginning. So twice for me, once for you. Okay, and we are again comparing the Living Bible, a paraphrase, which I'm not crazy about, it turns out. And we're using the New American Standard, a word-for-word, -word, very accurate word-for-word -word translation to compare it with. So, okay, verse 1. Don't brag about your plans for tomorrow. Wait and see what happens. Okay, wait and see what happens. That's it. it says, for you do not know what a day may bring. Okay, so don't boast about tomorrow. Okay, you never know. It doesn't say wait and see. It says you never know what's going to happen. Okay, Jesus said that too. Okay, live for today. Okay, number two is very important. Don't praise yourself. Let others do it. Okay, nobody likes a bragger. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips, right? Don't ever brag. And I talked about in um, the last video that you didn't hear that sometimes it's necessary to, to let somebody know that you have some skills, but you can do it without bragging, you know? I know in my own life, I've gone to churches, you know, God sent me from church to church to be a a worship leader and to help out and sometimes I would go to a new church where I didn't know anybody I would be there three or four months and the subject would just never come up okay and finally somebody says man we need some help on the worship team and and you know I would say well um I have some experience I've done it for a while and you know I, I can play guitar and and I'm primarily a singer okay they, is that bragging you're letting somebody know your skills. You, you're not saying, you know, I was the best there was, and I know every chord, and I can reach this up here, and I have this. No, you know, that's bragging. You know, let somebody else do that. But, okay, you can let somebody know your skill set without praising yourself. Okay, you'd be very humble about it. You know, sometimes in an interview, you have to tell somebody your skill set without praising yourself. And there's a fine line there, you know. So, yeah. That's why they love letter of recommendation from a previous boss. You know, let them praise you. It always looks better. Okay. And three, we highlight stuff blue that, that the living Bible just gets totally wrong, okay. A rebel's frustrations are heavier than sand and rocks, Okay. That is absolutely not what it says, okay? It says, the provocation of a fool is heavier than sand and rocks. A fool is not a rebel, and a rebel is not a fool, okay? A fool is somebody who's a simpleton, who's stupid, who doesn't want to learn anything, okay? And they're the provocation or provoking of a fool is heavier than sand and rocks not a rebel's frustration. I don't even know where they got that from. But. <laughs> Four. Jealousy is more dangerous and cruel than anger. Okay. Now this is true. Jealousy is the worst kind of anger there is. Okay. Wrath is fierce and anger is a flood, but who can stand before jealousy, it says over here. Okay. A lot of people make you angry. People do stupid stuff, and you know, and it's enough going on in the world that everybody should be angry at something. Jealousy is the worst because jealousy only happens when you are betrayed by somebody you love. Okay, the worst kind of you know anger is betrayal, and that's jealousy is a nasty thing. Okay. Open rebuke is better than hidden love. You think? If you never know, if somebody if you don't know somebody loves you and they never tell you, 
You know? Then yeah, it is. If you love somebody, you should tell them you love them. Okay? Let them know. Don't hide that kind of thing. Wounds from a friend are better than kisses from an enemy. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but deceitful are the kisses of an enemy. Okay? And wounds from a friend it could be just your best friend saying, you know what, you, if you keep doing that, you're going to get hurt. Okay? Because he care about you. Hmm? And, you know, enemies say, well, that was cool, do it again. You know? Because they want to see you fall and get hurt. Because they think that's funny. You find that all over the internet. People falling and getting hurt and people laughing about it. And, you know, I don't find those things funny. You know, people sl slipping on steps and banging their head and going falling down the stairs. And people are, oh, oh, oh. You know, I don't find that funny. Okay? But a lot of people do. Hmm? Get off on a tangent and that kind of stuff. Okay? Seven. Even honey seems tasteless to a man who is full, but if he is hungry, he will eat anything. Actually, it says over here, every bitter thing is, any bitter thing is sweet. If you are starving, you will eat moldy bread, okay? But somebody who is full, even candy, it doesn't sound good to them, okay? It's just a statement, and it's a true statement. Yeah. <clears throat> Eight, a man who strays from home is like a bird that wanders from its nest, right? Birds wander from the nest, they come back and find their nest is empty. Someone's taken all, eaten all the eggs and killed everything, okay? A man strays from home too long, you're going to come back and find an empty house. Okay? Just that simple. Yeah. That includes working too much. Okay? Spend your whole life working, I'm taking care of my family and providing them with the best. You know, what they want is you, okay? They don't want stuff. Spend your whole life and then find out everything you thought was important was not important. Mm. Nine friendly suggestions are as pleasant as perfume suggestions. Hmm. A person's advice is sweet to his friends. Advice suggestions, I suppose you could say that. I don't know. But that's advice, okay? People like advice from their friends. Okay, 10. We highlighted this one too. Never abandon a friend, either yours or your father's. Then you won't need to go to a distant relative for help in your time of need. It actually, the actual words are, and do not go to your brother's house on the day of your disaster. Okay? But either one is a true statement, okay? I have friends that live very close by. And they would do anything for me, I would do anything for them. If disaster struck them, I have room for them. You know, same thing. If disaster struck me, they have room for me. My brother lives 700 miles away, and he's got room, and he would help, but he's 700 miles away. Okay. Keep your friends. Keep your father's friends. It's important. Never abandon them. Okay, 11. My son, how happy I will be if you turn out to be sensible. It will be a public honor to me. Okay. Now, they don't go far enough for this paraphrase. Be wise, my son, and make my heart glad so that I may reply to one who taunts me. Okay. A public honor to me. I think, so you can reply to one who taunts the father. You know, I've never had anybody taunt me about my kids. There may be one. I mean, my, my middle son is kind of, you know, He's kind of rambunctious. And, I mean, he's a grown man now, 40. He's got kids, and he's a wonderful father, you know, and a good provider and caretaker. But but he went through some, you know, rebellious stuff, you know. Not fool. He was a rebel, not a fool, okay? He was never a fool. My kids are very smart, which is probably one of the reasons I take, almost take offense when they call a fool a rebel in the, over here when they're two totally different things. But yeah, if people come up and and start, you know, basically trashing your kids to you, you have a retort and they say, no, my son is smart. Did you know he owns his own home? He's owned three homes now and he's only 39 or 40 maybe. I don't know. One of those ages. You know, he has a wonderful daughter that loves him. He's had the same job for, for 
10 years and he's extremely skilled at what he does you know and you could just go on and on bragging about your kids you'll have a return if your kids are wise okay wise and sensible and it's up to you to teach him to be wise and sensible hmm? speaking of sensible 12 says a sensible man watches for problems ahead and prepares to meet them the simpleton never looks and suffers the consequences <laughs> now they use the word simpleton over here and they use naive over here <laughs> yeah, a prudent person sees evil and hides himself but then a you proceed and pay the penalty okay is that does that totally different to you okay. this says a prudent person sees evil and hides himself a sense of a man watches for problems ahead and prepares to meet them hmm. I'll let you decide I'm of the of the one over on the on the right here that says stay away from that kind of stuff okay okay all these protests especially even now they're starting all over again with some other thing you know they're these people are they're calling them anti-israel protesters when the truth is if you go and ask 90 percent of them have no idea what they're protesting they're getting paid to be there and they'll even tell you i don't know what i'm protesting i'm just here holding the sign okay Stay away from those kind of people. Just, you know, this won't just stay away, you know, because you're not going to change anything because they're paid to be there. And most times, especially with that kind of problem, if nobody turns out for their protest, they're going to break up and go home because the thing they're trying to do is cause trouble and agitate people. But, okay. 13. The world's poorest credit risk is the man who agrees to pay a stranger's debt. That is completely and utterly backwards. Okay. And Solomon talks about this in almost every chapter. You know, it's, the real one is take his garment when he becomes a guarantor for a stranger and for a foreign woman seize a pledge from him. Okay, get a collateral. Okay, it says it says nothing about a poor credit risk okay the poorest credit the world's poorest credit risk is the man who agrees to pay a stranger's debt set okay okay first off if you're co-signing a loan for somebody they're not gonna let you co-sign unless you have good credit you have to have good credit or they won't let you be a co-signer okay Paul simply says or Solomon <laughs> Paul Paul simply says don't be a co-signer and if you have to be a co-signer, get a collateral. Take their cloak. Back then, the cloak was the most important thing somebody has. That was their status, was the cloak that they wore. Okay. So, I mean, nowadays you would take the, you know, like banks, they take the they take the title to your car until you pay the car off. And if you don't pay it off, they take your car. Okay. So, of the... It's completely backwards. The world's poorest credit risk doesn't make any sense. Is a man who agrees to pay a stranger's debts. Okay, and you're not paying stranger's debts. Okay, if you co-sign for somebody, it's usually one of your kids or it's a friend that they have bad credit. And you know, I really need this car. Can you co-sign so I can? And what you're saying is to this to this stranger who now is the stranger's debt is that that this is your friend. If he doesn't pay for this car, you're going to pay for this car, or I'm going to take your car instead. Mm -hmm. Solomon says don't do that. So, yeah, that's... We've harped on that enough, haven't we? Fourteen. If you shout a pleasant greeting to a friend too early in the morning, he will count it as a curse. Right? Don't wake up your friends if they're asleep. Okay, let them sleep. Nobody likes that. Okay, 15 and 16 they put together. Because it is together. A constant dripping on a rainy day and a cranky woman are much alike. You can no more stop her complaints than you can stop the wind 
or hold on to anything with greasy hands. <coughs> okay. Now over here, it says a constant dripping on a day with steady rain and a contentious woman, it means a woman that likes to argue, are like he who would restrain or hide her, restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand. Okay, I heard a pastor talking yesterday on the internet. It's one of those things you go by and you stop and go, oh, what's he talking about? Because he mentioned this, this verse in Proverbs and I'd studied it a lot. And, and he made a lot of sense. You know, he, he was saying, why is your wife cranky? Why is she contentious? Okay, constantly. Maybe it's because she's not being heard. Maybe it's because she's asked you to do something 15 times over the last six months and you keep saying, I'll get to it, and you never do. And she worries about it. She's worried her house is going to come crashing down on her because you won't fix the roof, you know, or get it fixed. You know, you won't constantly won't pick up your clothes or you constantly won't even fill a dirty bowl with water and put it in the sink you know you just leave it piled up there and for her to take care of it you know there's a reason that wives become contentious and cranky and it's usually because they're not being heard by their husband by their kids and they feel they feel used they feel <clears throat> abused taken advantage of okay you can stop that. And it made a lot of sense to me, okay? Just, you know, oh, they're cranky, so just leave. Okay? Let's find out why, okay? Find out why. <clears throat> okay, 17. A friendly discussion is as stimulating as the sparks that fly when iron strikes iron. Okay, that, we're going to make that blue. That makes absolutely no sense as far as the real one. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Now, can you take that and turn that into a friendly discussion is as stimulating as the sparks that fly when iron strikes iron? Right. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Okay. Let, to me, says two absolutely and completely, totally different things. Okay, so, and you can paraphrase something. I mean, when we get together for a Bible study with five or six friends, what you're doing, if you're studying verses, is you're paraphrasing. Okay, you will go around, you know, and you can say, as as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. What does that say to you, Bob? And Bob will give you his paraphrase. Well, I think it says. Mm -hmm. And if he says, I think it says a friendly discussion is as stimulating as the sparks that fly when iron strikes iron, okay? And that said nothing about sharpening, you know, another person, you know. And, you know, Jerry over here is going to say, well, I think it says something different. It doesn't say anything about sparks that fly when iron strikes iron. It says this iron sharpens iron. And you get discussion, and that's how Bible studies. But, but just to read one person's paraphrase, you're leaving a lot on the table, okay? So, but to me, that doesn't say the same thing as, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another, okay? Two people get together that have similar skill sets. One's going to be very good in some things, and one's going to be very good in other things. And when you put them together, they can learn from each other and can both be, can become experts in their field. Hmm? But a friendly discussion. I don't know. They got up on that all day. Have a Bible study. Get five or six friends together and read them this verse 17 and see what it says to them. See if any of them comes up with something similar to this. Hmm? I'd be surprised what kind of paraphrases you can come up with. <clears throat> 18. A workman may eat from the orchard he tends. Anyone should be rewarded who protects another's interests. Right. That was a law back then. If you hired people to work in your fields or in your orchards and your olive trees or fig trees, they were allowed to eat from the tree while they were working. They were just, you know, and they were privileged to do that because they protected your fields. They weren't letting anybody else in and they were taking care of them. Hmm. So, 19. A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. Okay. 
So the heart of a person reflects the person. Okay. Does that say the same thing? Hmm. I mean, you can put on your best suit, but your heart, the heart of a person reflects the kind of person you are. Okay. I don't know if that's, he's, <clears throat> what he's really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. I mean, I suppose it could be that way, but it doesn't go far enough, you know, just by the kind of friends they choose. Okay. So, but, yeah, the heart of a person reflects the person. Okay, 20. Ambition and death are alike. Neither is ever satisfied. <clears throat> now they're putting ambition here when it's, and it says a man's eyes, reference to lust. I don't think that's true at all. It says Shoal and Abaddon are never satisfied, which Shoal is hell, and Abaddon is the place of destruction. Okay? And this is very important. Nor are the eyes of a person ever satisfied. Okay? Why everybody on earth is unhappy is because you are never satisfied. It says it right here in the Bible. You are never satisfied. Nobody, no matter how rich a person is, he always wants more. He is never satisfied. Okay? Jeff Bezos has, I think, three super yachts. Why did he buy the second one and the third one? He was not satisfied with the first one. You know, 300 feet and... And wealth and luxury of a castle on the water was not good enough for him. He always wants more. Everybody always wants more. You know? And and society has played into that, okay? With your Walmarts and your Amazons and your Ebays and your Facebook marketplaces. Everybody, they have made it very easy to completely stuff your house with crap. And most people's houses are stuffed with just... It's crap, okay? Crap. <clears throat> and you're still not satisfied. You always want more. Okay? That's the way it is. If a person can be satisfied with what they got, if they could actually, you know, if, they're, if the eyes of a person could be satisfied with everything they have, and there are a few that are like that, those are the people that are considered rich. Okay? And it has nothing to do with the amount of money or the amount of toys you have. So, yeah, a very true statement. The eyes of a person are never satisfied. Okay, 21. The purity of silver and gold can be tested in a crucible, but a man is tested by his reaction to men's praise. Okay, and that's, they didn't turn that around much. That's, ex that's exactly what it says over here. I've talked about, you know, melting metal before. Any kind of metal, you have to put it in a furnace and heat it up to melting and all the impurities rise to the top and you scrape them off and throw them away and what's left is pure silver, pure gold, pure metal. When God puts you through the fire and takes off the impurities, you're left with a pure heart. It is a painful process, but the result is amazing. Okay? A man is tested by his reaction to men's praise. Okay. And that's how you tell. If there's impurities, if a man is boastful and prideful, you praise him, he's going to say, of course, I'm the best there is. Why wouldn't I be? You know? Or if you're going to be hungry, then say, thank you. you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've learned some things the hard way. Okay. Tested by their praise. It's true. And 22, they use the word rebel. And they even said, you can't separate a rebel from his foolishness, though you can crush him to powder. That, that sounds kind of gross. And it's not rebel, it's fool. A rebel is not a fool. A fool is not a rebel. In any, I will harp on that forever. And because of that, I will probably never use the living Bible again. Okay. Actually, it says, though you pound a fool in a mortar and pestle, being a bit extreme here, along with crushed grain, his foolishness still will not leave him. Okay? A fool's foolishness will not leave him even if you crush him to powder. Okay? Doesn't say anything about a rebel. 
never says anything about a rebel. Okay. Okay, and <clears throat> 23 through 27, it's all one paragraph, okay. Riches can disappear faster, and the king's crown doesn't stay in his family forever. So watch your business interests closely. What's this? Business is implied. <laughs> right. Know the state of your flocks and your herds. Then there will be lambs wool enough for clothing and goats milk enough for food for all your household. After the hay is harvested and the new crop appears and the mountain grasses are gathered in. Okay. Now let's leave it over here. Know the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds for riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure all generations. When the grass disappears and the new growth is seen and the herbs of the mountains are gathered in, the lambs will be... The lambs will be for your clothing, and the goats will bring the price of a field. There will be enough goat's milk for your food, and the food of your household, and the sustenance of your attendants or servants. Okay. Now, this whole thing is very much. Um, I'm not going to let me highlight it. Isn't that strange? It says. And this is to men, know the condition of your finances, know how much you got in the bank, know how much is coming, know how much you have to spend, know when your bills are due, know when the food needs replaced, okay? <clears throat> it's very important that men know this stuff. Don't leave it to the women, you know? That makes them, what they are up north there when we saw this in the other verses, makes them crank and contentious. When you're running along happy go luck and they have to worry about all the paying all the bills as well as keeping the house. Okay? It's your job. Okay. Riches are not forever. It says that. You know. Pay attention to your the flocks and your herds. That's your business. Pay attention to your business. Pay attention to what's due, when it's due, and know and have the money there to do it. Okay? And then You'll have plenty. If you know, you'll have plenty. Okay? There shouldn't be any surprises in your finances. You know, if the surprise stuff comes up, I mean, the transmission falls out of your car, that's a surprise. But you should be prepared for it. So, you know, and this is important. Know the condition of your household, and then everything will go good. That's very basic, is what it says there. So, there you have it. That is Proverbs 27. Okay? And I, since I already rehearsed this and did the whole thing once already, I didn't have to go back and, and reread the highlights, you know, but you can, you can, you know, look at that. So lots of good stuff in there. Okay. Lots of, lots of good, good advice, good information. So there you have it. Stay tuned later today. We're reading more Psalms in through the Bible in one year. We're taking a break from the genealogy. Thank goodness. I think they did that on purpose because too much genealogy just crams your head full of stuff that you can't remember anyway. So, but stay tuned for that. Catch up on any you missed. Give us a like if you think about it. But, they let it run. We'll see ya. Stay humble. <laughs>